fix it. We all know how to change circuit packs. It's pretty easy. Not much thought involved. But that's just the problem. Too many people put too little thought into changing packs. Here's a question. How many mistakes did the man make when he changed the pack? Now go over the sequence in your mind. How many mistakes were made? He made five mistakes, any of which could destroy the pack instantly or cripple it. So it might pass all tests now, but still fail within a short period of time. This problem is expensive. Disruption of service, the cost of the packs, even the time it costs you in rework. This is why we're going to cover how to correctly change a 5 ESS switch circuit pack. Changing today's circuit packs is deceivingly easy. However, it is also easy to make mistakes while changing them. Today's high technology components need special handling to avoid destroying them. Let's look at the procedures. When the system finds a pack that is in trouble, you will usually see it listed in the TLP printout. The printout gives you the exact location of the suspect pack. In this example, the bad pack is in aisle 108, switching module 1 in cabinet LTP0. Once the cabinet door is open, you'll find the last two numbers on the unit designation strip. The pack is 36 inches from the floor and number 136 from the left. Each number is 1 eighth of an inch from the left on the designation strip. When replacing packs, you've got to be careful to get the exact replacement. The pack apparatus code and CLI code numbers on the TLP printout help here. These identification numbers should match on the trouble report, the suspected bad pack, and the replacement pack. Some packs contain software on ROM chips called firmware. A microcode number identifies the firmware version that is programmed on the board. You must match the microcode numbers, otherwise you will have operational problems. Your electrostatic discharge procedures now come into play. Leave the pack in its packaging until you're ready to install it. You should be grounded to the frame before you remove the packaging. The next step is more crucial. If you make a mistake here, you could be responsible for a serious service interruption. Make sure the unit is really out of service. Usually, the diagnostic program will leave it removed from service, but a check will save you lots of possible trouble. Now look at the unit. If it's a simplex unit, it's sometimes better to let it continue working at a degraded service level than to disable it. For example, if you needed to change a line unit grid board, you would remove service from 32 subscribers. You might want to change this type of pack during low traffic periods. Your local procedures will dictate when to change this type of pack. Packs in simplex units are easy to change. As soon as the latch is pulled down, power is removed from the pack. Installing a simplex pack is just as simple. Note how the packs are handled. They don't touch any non-grounded surface. The old board is protected before it leaves the machine. Power is restored to the new board as soon as the pack is plugged in. The second pack type is found in duplex units. Duplex units are found in the AM, CM, or the MCTU in the SM. 
You can identify them by the power control pack. These packs are a little more complicated to change. First, remove the unit from service. The next step is to power it down. Let's take a look at the duplex unit's power control pack. Note that the diagnostic program has already removed the pack from service. To power down the unit, move the Restore to Service Request Out of Service switch to the Request Out of Service position. The Request Out of Service LED will light. Now you remove power by pressing the Off button. The duplex pack can now be removed. Again, make sure your wrist strap is connected to the frame. Unwrap the replacement pack, holding it only by the edges. Have you ever had to replace bent pins in a back plane? I've never found it to be much fun. This is the problem you'll run into if you aren't careful when you insert the pack. You'll need to line up the edges of the pack with the upper and lower guide slots. Once the pack touches the back plane pins, gently push the pack in using the latching tab. The power up procedure is quick. Push on. Once the off LED extinguishes, move the Request Out of Service Restore switch to the Restore position. The system will then diagnose and restore the unit to service. On a simplex pack, you'll have one more step. The last step is to restore the pack to service. You'll do this at a TTY or the MCC. And that's how to change a pack. Several points call for a review. Let's take a quick second look at them. To locate a suspected pack, you'll need to find the coordinates on the TLP printout. The first number shows the aisle number. The second number is the module identifier. The CM, SMC, or LTP number tells you which cabinet the pack is in. The last numbers give you the height of the pack from the floor and the location on the shelf. Aisle numbers are found on the end guard. The module labels are also on the end guard, starting with the nearest cabinet. Individual cabinets are labeled on the cabinet bezel. The shelf numbers are here. The pack location numbers are printed on the designation strip. A very important point is to always make sure the unit is out of service. If not, you might bring down the system. At the very least, you'll disrupt service. Be sure to use your wrist strap removing the replacement pack's protective wrapping just before you install it, not any earlier. Once you've changed the pack, go through the restore process and check your work. Did the new pack clear the trouble? At the beginning of the program, we watched a person change a pack incorrectly. Let's watch it again and see all five mistakes. The first mistake he made was taking the pack out of the electrostatic wrapping before he was ready to install it. The second mistake was leaving the power on to the pack when changing it. If he hadn't ruined the replacement with a static discharge, he destroyed it with the power supply. This can also cause trouble somewhere else in the unit. ESD is the third mistake. Always ground yourself to the machine before changing packs. Here is the fourth mistake, forcing the pack. This is a quick way of causing a backplane repair. Did you catch the fifth mistake? It was the most serious. He didn't check to make sure the board was out of service. If it was in use, he may have cut service to a few hundred people. Following the procedures you've seen here will save you a lot of trouble and time in the next several years. Trouble from customer complaints, time you would have spent redoing work you've already done. These procedures will save you time and trouble, but only if you use them.